Hello and welcome to the Wellness Village. This is Lydia. Today I am hanging out with Mrs. Seal. She has a little business, Mrs. Seal's Kitchen Cultures. It's a small business, but she loves fermenting, so she was more than happy to answer a few questions that I had for her about fermenting. So let's get started. The first thing I asked her was, what was the first thing you fermented and how easy is it to get started? This is what she said. The first thing I ever fermented, and it's by far the easiest, still, after years of fermenting, the first thing I ever fermented was uh, just some homemade sauerkraut, and it's all it is is cabbage. I, uh, one quart of sauerkraut is made from one good sized head of cabbage. I just bought the cabbage over at my local grocery store and brought it home and I made a big mess. I had a chopping board right here. I just chopped up that cabbage, put it in a red bowl and pounded and pounded and pounded it to bring the juice up. The starter for a, for a vegetable ferments is already on the vegetables. If you are getting uh, vegetables out of your garden or at a farmer's market, your neighbors, even at the grocery store, lactobacillus bacteria, the friendly bacteria that should be on all produce and should be in our gut and in gardens is already on that cabbage and washing it off under the running water in the sink isn't going to kill them. So while you're chopping the cabbage up, you've got lactobacillus on your hands, you've got it on your chopping board, you've got it on your knife and then when you put it in a big plastic bowl and you're pounding it, I use um, uh, kind of a meat tenderizer to pound it. Once you bring the juice of the cabbage up, release the juice of the cabbage, then the lactobacillus that's already on the cabbage starts to consume the sugar in the cabbage juice. That's fermentation. Now, when I'm stuffing a jar like this, stuffing a jar with that pounded cabbage and its juice, I add one tablespoon of salt, real salt, a high mineral salt. And that salty brine is a perfect, perfect environment for lactobacillus to continue the fermentation process. So I uh, just keep a, a, an airlock on it or some other device to hold the fruit down, hold the, the vegetables down under the brine for about five days and that's the fermentation process. Then you take all that off and actually you just secure a tight lid on it, label it, stick it downstairs cool it down. When you cool off a of fermentation, you stick it in the fridge or put it in a cool place that slows down the fermentation uh, activity. And uh, then you can start eating it. Within, within a week, within two weeks, you can start eating it and get all the benefits of that, of that wonderful probiotic food. Uh, cabbage, in other words sauerkraut, cabbage, probably one of the best fermented foods you can start with. Uh, it tastes good, it's very refreshing, it replaces the, the bad bacteria in your gut with the good bacteria, and it's easy. It's probably one of the easiest things to do. Another great vegetable ferment I love is the beet kvass. This is beet kvass. There's chunks of, uh, little chunks, now this is the second ferment on this, on this one. Um, two weeks ago, the, the pieces of beets were big slices of beets. And I've just uh, recently put in, uh, added a couple of lemons and ginger. And that just so improved the flavor. Beet kvass goes back, oh, centuries, ancient Russian and <laughs> ancient, ancient Russian and Chinese. Uh, used to make kvass all the time for their elderly people, for their sick people, uh, for uh, women needing to get pregnant. Um, this was a tonic, a liver tonic. Um, and you can tell it's a liver tonic by the color. <laughs> it's very deep dark red. And what you do is consume the juice. You pour the juice off. And it's salty again. It has some salt in it. and. Um, uh, for beet kvass in a two-quart container like this, uh, the first time I made it, I used two tablespoons of salt. That was too much. So I think somewhere between one tablespoon, tablespoon and a half of salt, 
and then a little bit of chlorine free water uh, to fill the fill it up and then the lactobacillus that are already on the beets they start consuming that the sugars in the beet juice and beets are sweet so there's a lot of juice there uh, sugar to consume and uh, an airlock helps to keep the air and the mold out and the and let the off gas the carbon dioxide off gas from the fermentation process. Do you need one of those airlocks? You really don't need this. Uh, actually, um, there are some simple ways to do it. What you do is uh, for a wide mouth jar, you just have to find a container, a heavy one like this uh, glass cup, restaurant cup, that just kind of fits right in there and it holds the food down under the brine. You want to hold it down under the juice for about five days and it still will bubble up. Some of the juice and the brine will bubble over so you really need to put a plate underneath it so it gets messy. But it's heavy enough, it'll, it'll hold that food down. My, my health and my diet up another notch. I think a really, really great notch. Up to another level. Um, I think my um, gut bacteria was in serious jeopardy. I think I had leaky gut issues. I know I had IBS. Uh, I was eating the wrong foods that fed the wrong bacteria in my gut, which is candida. It's a yeast. And I was giving it way too much sugar, way too much starch. And for me, that was, that was the wrong food to be feeding. What I needed to do was, um, uh, first of all, change my diet. But adding fermented foods has been um, a blessing and a godsend for my health.